Hi everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit. I am glad to be back for another video. It's been a couple weeks, things have been kind of crazy. Uh, glad to be back. I Speaking of backs, I threw mine out a couple weeks ago, um, moving some soda into a shopping cart, and I've been kind of in traction for a couple weeks. So I'm back to feeling like a human being again, and <laughs> glad to get back to doing some pen videos. So today's pen, it's another one of those pens that if you've been around the fountain pen community, you know this pen, you know of it, you probably have one or had one or want one. Um, everyone's had this pen at one point or another. It's been around for decades. It's a very well-known pen and it is the Pilot Vanishing Point. Here in the U.S. it's known as the Vanishing Point. I've also heard it mentioned or referred to as the Capless uh, and it is a retractable fountain pen. So I'll try to get in focus here. Uh, you can see cut over the close-up cam. Uh, the nib actually comes out and retracts. So inside the pen, there's kind of a closed door inner cap flap. And when you push the button down, the feed comes up and pushes that door open. The nib comes out, locks in place. You write when you're done, closes back up again. And that inner cap allows the, the nib not to dry out. It's a pretty slick little, little bit of engineering. And I, I, I like this pen quite a bit. Um, so let's let's start with the stats, then I'm going to walk you through what the pen looks like. So in terms of length, we are looking at 100, and if I'm remembering my, my earlier measurements correctly, um, looking at 140 millimeters. And that's both, both with the nib extended and with the nib out. Obviously, you push this end down and the nib comes out, so it's, the, you know, it's physics. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, the weight of the pen is 32 grams. On this pen, it's 32 grams. And uh, and that's maybe a little heavier than you would expect of a pen from this size. And I did get a, a nifty little tool here. So now I can tell you how wide the diameter of the pen. So in the writing, the section where I do my writing, where I hold the pen, uh, it sits at about 12.3 millimeters. Um, so, and the widest section of the pen is right around 13, 13 and a half millimeters. So um, it's not the widest pen in the world, but it's also not super skinny. It's, it's a nice, comfortable feeling pen uh, for me. So let's go ahead and let me show you kind of the physical stats of this pen, because it's something a little different than what you're used to. So uh, over here on the close-up cam, you can see the pen. Mine's in this kind of terracotta color. It feels like enamel, but I'm sure it's not enamel. Um, actually, I have no idea what it is. So I, should, I shouldn't say I'm sure it's not enamel because frankly, I don't know. Uh, the, the pen has a metal end down here. Mine is rhodium plated and the clip. Now this is the, the writing tip end. So the clip is on the writing tip end. And that makes sense when you remember it's a fountain pen. So normal pens, the clip would be up here on the button and you put the, the pen in your pocket and that's great. Well, the problem is you probably don't want to be storing a pen upside down in your shirt pocket, especially because while there is an inner cap, it's not one, it, I would not call it waterproof. So if it leaks, it would drain, it could drain right out into your shirt. So obviously storing the nib upright is probably a better idea. And with the clip on that end, you can see right here, I can just clip it into my shirt pocket, walk around, it works just fine. So this is a pen I use for taking notes. And when I have to, you know, and rather than screwing and unscrewing a cap every time I want to write something, if I'm grocery shopping or checking things off a to-do list or taking notes at work, this is a pen I use a lot for those sorts of tasks. Um, the, the one thing about having the clip down on this writing end, though, is that depending on your grip, you're going to hate this pen or it won't bother you. Because if you've got a grip that brings your hand over the top of the pen, or you roll your grip, it's gonna be it's gonna be problematic for you. So, just having a kind of a standard grip there, uh, I think, will be helpful. Um, you know, the button here also the same color as the tip and the clip, and then there's the center ring, and it says Pilot Japan on the back here. I'm gonna bring the light in just a little closer, and then let's talk about the innards of the pen. So the pen screws apart in the middle of the barrel. And inside, everything from here to here is a single nib unit. So you, you buy the nibs as a single unit, and uh, they, you know, it, it includes a sleeve that the cartridge or converter goes into. It's an 18 karat nib on my pen, and it says 
it says Pilot 18K750, M for medium, and then it says 712, and then there's a little, a bunch of hallmarks stamped down there that I would need, uh, I'd need a magnifying glass to see, because in these lights, I'm getting glare off of it. So um, the one thing I'll point out is, you know, obviously, if you've watched my videos before, especially my videos on the Pilot Metropolitan or the Pilot Falcon, the Miki Falcon, you know, I don't love their cartridges and converters. This is one pen where they don't bother me. And part of the reason, there's two reasons for that. One is this to me is a case of form following function. On the Metropolitan and the, the Falcon, there was no reason they couldn't use Standard International. On this pen, there is, in my opinion, because you have to make sure that the cartridges or converters are the right size to work in this more complex internal mechanism. Now, granted, I understand that if they do it for one pen, they might as well do it for all their pens and just be consistent. I get it. I'm not saying I make I'm, I make a lot of logical sense. That's just my, my personal take on it. Um, but like I mentioned, on this pen, it doesn't bother me. Now, my pen will accept either a converter or a cartridge rather, or the Con 50 converter, which is the shorter of the two piston style converters here. And I need to bring this closer to me so you can actually see it. Um, and I've got it inked up here. And because it fits so fully into the slot, you can see, I mean, here's the full converter, but almost all of it fits into the sleeve of the nib unit. Uh, it works really quite nicely. And then it slips right in, you screw the top on, and you are set. So, as I mentioned, this pen I really actually like quite a bit. It, um, it's heavy enough for me. It's not too narrow. I don't mind the clip. I, the grip for me works quite well. The, and the thing I really loved about this pen, and notice I used a, the past tense word, loved about this pen, was this was, up until December of 2013, the single smoothest pen I have ever used, ever. It was, it was like writing with butter. It was so super smooth. And I love that. I just, I mean, it, just, it would just float on the paper. It was beautiful. So why do I use the word, the past tense? Well, uh, at Christmas time, as I mentioned before, I took all my pens home with me and some of them got passed around. Now I can feel the collective cringes from those of you out there who are fountain pen users. You probably know the rest of this story, but, um, if you're not, if you're new to fountain pens, uh, basically passing your pens around is a really bad idea for a couple reasons. Starters, for starters, a pen will adapt itself to the way you write over time, depending on how you hold it, how much pressure you apply, etc. So passing it off to others can kind of screw up that adaptation, especially if reason number two people apply too much pressure. So anyone who's used to using a 39 cent Bic or Biro pen as they're called, uh, is used to pressing really hard and you know their hand cramping up as they write. You can't do that on most, uh, most fountain pens and you really can't do it on this fountain pen. The nib is so narrow all the way to the tip because it doesn't have the wings that, you know, where it comes in like a lot of nibs. It's, it's narrow so it will work as a retractable. Um, and as a result, it does have a little bit of bounce and a little bit of give to it. Well, someone who to whom I passed this around probably pressed too hard or did something. And when I brought the pen home, inked it up and tried writing with it after Christmas, it wouldn't even write. It was scratchy as all get out and wouldn't even write. And it was when I pulled out the, the uh, loop and started looking at it, I realized it had been bent all to hell. So um, instead of instead of the the nib tines being like this or being like this, they were like this. They were actually pointed out and they were off center. Uh, I spent a lot of time, I spent probably half an hour trying to get the nib tines to come back together um, and, and get the ink flow uh, working again, get the capillary action working and smoothing the nib. I've got it back to about 90% of where it was, but it's not as good as it was when I first bought it. And it kind of hurts, you know, it makes me sad. This is one I'm probably going to send to a Nim Meister to, to do their magic on because I miss that super, super smooth feeling that I used to have. And uh, I want to make sure that I get that back. Either that or I'll, you know, throw my money down the toilet and go uh, buy another Nib unit and replace it that way. So, um, as I mentioned, I like this pen a lot, a lot more than I thought I was going to, frankly. Uh, when I first got it, the, the hand position was rough for me and I didn't like it that much. Um, 
but the convenience of having it having it retractable is awesome. I don't use this for long-term writing. If I'm going to sit down and write for half an hour or an hour straight, I won't pick this pen up. Um, I use this at work with notes or at the grocery store when I'm crossing things off my shopping list, that sort of thing. That's the kind of pen it is for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do, your write, do a writing sample here, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about the pen. So here we go. Okay, so this is the Pilot. Vanishing point. And we have a 14 karat gold medium nib. And ink is one of my all time favorites. Hiroshizuku Kujaku. And you'll have to excuse some of the darker writing up here. Um, I, I had dipped this and, and filled this pen right before the video, so the feed was a little saturated. Um, and we're on a Rhodia dot pad, as we are every single time we do one of these. So let us go ahead and do just a bit of writing here. Okay, so you'll notice no problem skipping, starting, any of that sort of thing. It, it floats kind of across the page. It is still a little bit broader than it ought to be for a medium because I wasn't able to get the tines as close as I would like to. And it's a touch, tiny, tiny touch wetter than it used to be. Um, but I don't want to I don't want to push this nib too far. So um, I, and it works for me. It works like this, no problem. But, you know, I, I can also still feel just a little bit more feedback than I had before, but it's it's pretty good. Even in its current state, I would say in terms of smoothness, this nib is probably in the top 10 of my pens in terms of nib smoothness. It's still quite smooth. Um, it's just not as smooth as it was. So sad, sad mat. Um, in terms of of line variation. There is some, and as I mentioned before, and I'm actually going to pull the pen apart again really quickly here. Notice how thin, I mean, this is the nib itself from here to here. There's not a lot of structure in place to keep that nib from uh, flexing on its own. Now, it's it's pretty thick, so it's not, it's not, it was not a flexible nib at all. It's not even a semi-flex nib. It's just a, it's, it's very narrow. And so when you don't have the, the structure of those wings on the side of the nib to prevent the, the tip from flexing back a little bit, you can force a little bit of, of line variation out of the nib, but I would not recommend it um, because obviously, look at what happened. That's probably what happened to my nib is it got pushed too hard. Uh, upside down writing, hey, it, it's it's nice upside down. And it's I would consider this more like a, a European style fine as opposed to a Japanese style fine. And this is more of a, a European style medium than a Japanese medium. Generally speaking, the Japanese pens tend to run a little bit smaller than their name would, would indicate. So a Japanese medium would be like a European fine, that sort of thing. Um, this, this feels like more on the European scale where it is right now. But all in all, I like it. Actually, I like it a lot. Um, this is a pen that I, I will keep in my collection probably my whole life. The utility of the pen, to me, makes up for some of the... I mean, th there's nothing particularly exciting style-wise about this pen. It's nice. It's not, but it's not going to catch anyone's eye. Most people aren't even going to realize that it is a fountain pen because it looks and acts like a ballpoint or a roller, actually a ballpoint because rollerballs usually have caps, um, which is cool. You know, 
it's it's incognito and you're not going to have to worry about dropping your cap or losing your cap or whether or not to post it. It is what it is. And it comes in a whole variety of colors and a whole variety of designs and, and materials. There was a special limited edition last year that was made out of, I think it was maple wood. Um, I haven't seen the new one, the new limited edition for 2014 yet, but it's a nice pen. I like it. I use it a lot. Just be aware if you don't have a tripod grip or you roll your grip one way or the other, this pen might be a little problematic for you because that clip is right in the way. So that's my review of the Pilot Vanishing Point. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please check us out on Facebook or Twitter. And by us, I mean me, since the pen habit is just me. Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google+. Plus. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please like the video. All that fun stuff. Uh, help help me get some more traffic and get more people coming to the Pen Habit, the penhabit.com website. Or if you have any questions, please send them to penhabit at gmail.com. And really quickly, in my next couple of videos, I'm as I've said before, I'm getting toward the end of the pens in my collection. I'm sure I will continue to acquire them, but the, the volume, the frequency of pens is going to slow down. Um, I'm going to start going back and doing some re-reviews of pens, particularly the pens that I didn't care for or didn't like at the time, but everyone else seems to, and see is what were my initial impressions way off. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to, to send them to me, and I'll try to, to answer them in upcoming videos. And other than that, thank you for watching, and we'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.